Welcome to episode 190, Roman Abramovich, from Jewish orphan to global billionaire. This is an outline of episode 190. There are three reasons why we study Abramovich. First, he became a billionaire in his early 30s. Second, he owns the Chelsea Football Club. Third, he is one of Russian oligarchs. Let us meet young Roman Abramovich. Roman Abramovich doesn't like to talk about his past, his wealth, or how he came to be in such a position at the tender age of 38. Who are the Russian oligarchs? Why are there about a hundred oligarchs? You watched the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s with endless morbid fascination. After ruling half the world for 75 years, one of the world's two great superpowers, not to mention the global poster boy for state communism, collapsed in pieces. National chaos ensued, controlled by a band of nervy, upstart capitalists. A hundred people who controlled everything, who quickly came to be known as the oligarchs. Roman Abramovich was born in 1966 to Jewish family in Saratov, Russia. On the Volga River, into a Jewish family, but he would be an orphan at five. Roman Abramovich's mother died when he was still a little baby. And was brought up by an uncle, then his grandmother in Moscow. He studied highway engineering, although no evidence exists that he graduated, and entered the army for his national service. Here is how Abramovich got so rich, so young. Roman Abramovich made his billions when Russia was the Wild East. Gangsterism was raging as the old Soviet cake was carved up. Corruption was rife. So where did the money come from? Abramovich dropped out of the university and started selling everything and anything, from computers to car tires. But the young Abramovich fled the frozen north and pitched up in Moscow, just in time to witness the death throes of the Soviet Union. As communism collapsed, Abramovich went capitalist. He flogged, they say, anything and everything, from car tires to cuddly toys. The early 90s were wild times in Russia, as a new breed of fabulously wealthy businessmen was born. The oligarch. Boris Beresovsky, also Jewish, was Russia's first oligarch. By 1997, Forbes magazine listed his net worth as $3 billion. One of the first was Boris Berezovsky. He ushered in the age of perestroika, or reconstruction, insisting that socialism needed freedom of expression and the creativity of its citizens. For those dreaming of a better life, more money and freedom, this was the signal they'd been waiting for. В то время э, я понимал, что для советского человека э, был две мечты. Одна мечта называлась э, автомобиль, вторая мечта называлась квартира. И я ей предложил начать строить в России рынок продажи автомобилей. Berezovsky managed to get his hands on thousands of cars, which he sold even before he'd bought them. He also benefited from the opening up of foreign markets. He bought Soviet cars intended for export at a very low price, then sold them back to Russian citizens at the price set by the authorities. His car export business, in fact, only existed on paper. Это были первые деньги, которые мы заработали. В то время огромные деньги это 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 были миллионы рублей, и это было очень успешное начинание. Berezovsky is important because Roman Abramovich was his protege. At the age of just 28, Abramovich, seeing his chance of making millions, hitchhiked a ride on Berezovsky's coattails. How Berezovsky joined the family of Yeltsin. Early on, the oligarchs realized that to make money in the new Russia, it's not what you know, it's who you know. By 95, Berezovsky was a key member of what was nicknamed the family. The family, first and foremost, was President Yeltsin and a few other people who were members of his family. The oligarchs helped Yeltsin won re-election in Russia in 1996 against the communists. Behind in the polls, Yeltsin needed little short of a miracle. Enter the oligarchs. It also happened, of course, that these oligarchs control now most of the television networks and the newspapers. 
and so they were able to use the media to change voters' opinions. So Yeltsin, instead of appearing to be uh, alcoholic and not uh, in command of his senses, so Yeltsin won. As a favor for helping re-elect Yeltsin, Abramovich and Beresovsky was awarded Sibnet, a large oil company. Subsequently, Russia's most valuable state assets were sold at a fraction of the market price. After Yeltsin's re-election, Berezovsky and Abramovich bought Sibnef for $100 million. It's thought that its true worth was close to $3 billion. Sibnef, now worth $15 billion, was auctioned for just $150 million. Abramovich and Berezovsky insist that no one else was prepared to take the gamble, one which was to earn them a markup of 10,000%. Transition from Yeltsin to Putin in 2000. By the end of 99, the oligarchs were in trouble again. Their old chum in the Kremlin was looking a bit shaky. The alternatives to Yeltsin didn't seem quite so oligarch friendly. So Berezovsky, Abramovich and the others began looking for a replacement. Vladimir Putin used to be a colonel in the KGB. All the might and power of, of the media owned by Boris Berezovsky. They started to build a huge propaganda campaign in support of Putin for presidency. And finally, Putin was elected. With their man in the Kremlin, things seemed rosier for the oligarchs. In 2002 to 2003, Putin realized how much the oligarchs were hated in Russia. Putin turned against the oligarchs and started to arrest some of them. He's been long wanted in Russia on a number of charges. And in 2007, Berezovsky was tried in absentia and found guilty of embezzling money from Russian airline Aeroflot in the 1990s. In June 2003, Abramovich bought Chelsea Football Club. He was only 37. Chelsea wasn't his first choice. Pini Tzahivi, the Israeli super agent and fixer, had offered a number of options. Portsmouth FC was mentioned, as was Manchester United, but Chelsea offered something attractive. For one, the club was in London, which Abramovich had made his second home amongst the wealthy Russian elite. Chelsea was also in dire financial straits. Ken Bates had dragged the club into the modern era after buying Chelsea for one pound in the early 1980s, but by 2003, the club had a huge amount of debt and was struggling to meet a $23 million interest payment. Enter Abramovich, who, according to then Chelsea CEO Trevor Birch, concluded the deal in just 15 minutes. The lawsuit between Beresovsky and Abramovich in 2008 in London. The first billionaire Beresovsky is suing the second, Abramovich, over a past they once shared. Berezovsky claims that his one-time protégé Abramovich used intimidation to force him to sell his stakes in the oil company Sibneft, Russian Aluminium and the television channel ORT for a fraction of their market value, following a meeting, he says, took place in the south of France in 2000. Berezovsky made nearly one billion US dollars from the sale, but he argues the companies were worth at least five times that amount. In 2012, Berezovsky was found dead by hanging in his London home. No one knows if he's murdered or committed suicide. The verdict is open. What have I learned today? First, Berezovsky was the first Russian oligarch who made his fortune under Gorbachev in 1989. Second, Abramovich, also Jewish, became protege of Beresovsky. Third, Abramovich and Beresovsky helped Yeltsin re-elected, and in return got Sibnet and other prices. Fourth, Putin was elected and turned against the oligarchs. Fifth, Abramovich and Beresovsky went exile. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Roman Abramovich, 10 Facts, wishing everyone peace and prosperity.